B2B is in the midst of a renaissance. Business models, innovation drivers and buyers have evolved dramatically, catapulting B2B companies to the forefront of global profitability. According to the recently released LinkedIn B2B Marketing Benchmark Report, amidst economic uncertainty, B2B leaders remain steadfastly optimistic about their organization's future and the pivotal role of marketing in their growth. Today, we have the absolute pleasure and privilege of talking with Rob Gold, CEO of Merkle B2B UK, an agency specifically designed end-to-end -to, -end to ensure their clients thrive in the ever-changing B2B landscape. Our focus today is discussing the latest edition of their recently released Superpowers research. This Merkle B2B body of research reveals the factors that truly sway B2B buyers' decisions and what brands really need to be cognizant of if they are to win in an increasingly competitive consideration set. Interest peaked, I really do hope so. Let's hear a little bit more. Welcome, Rob. It's an absolute pleasure to have you in the LinkedIn Can studio. Oh, it's a privilege to be here, thank you. Oh, I'm thrilled to have you. So before we dig into the superpowers research tonight, I just mentioned that globally we are finding at LinkedIn that leaders are feeling really optimistic, B2B leaders feeling super optimistic. What is your read on that? What's your interpretation of that trend? Well, I mean, clearly we're in a situation globally which is, you know, quite concerning. Um, I think we've got a choice between, you know, what we do about that. And I think that people recognise in our industry that as B2B marketers, we've got the ability to have a profound impact on some of those um, really quite concerning trends. Mm -hmm. If I think about the economy, the talent base, of course, the impact on the planet, businesses have a really, really important role on making a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I see and what we look at across the category, B2B marketeers are jumping into that and saying, hey, look, we know that we have an impact and we're going to make a big impact. So I think there's maybe optimism is, a, is, a, is one way of thinking about it, but mm -hmm. also just responsibility is another. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important in B2B because actually the category is so dynamic and so thriving. You know, it has a history of legacy. It's traditional, it's siloed, it's disconnected. But right now we're in an ecosystem which is dynamic and people are doing fantastic work and using technology platforms and really recognising, to my point, the impact that they can have. Mm -hmm. And what we see is opportunity everywhere. And I think that's what's optimistic. Um, and as agencies, as partners, as customers, People know, I think, that we can really have an impact on some of the big societal mm -hmm. issues that are going on. And I think it's about responsibility as well as optimism. Yeah. I love that opportunity everywhere. And yeah, I totally agree. Um, so let's have a little um, chat about the actual research, the superpowers research that you brought out recently. I'd love to know just a little bit more about the origin of that and why uh, you put, you know, created that research and what does it solve for? So, so we, we strongly believe if you're going to have a point of view around what to do in this ecosystem, you need to understand buyers and customers. Mm -hmm. So three years ago, we commissioned a piece of work to start really getting under the skin of what makes buyers tick, what drives behaviour, what's important to customers. Um, and we call it the superpowers um, because it's really, we think it gives customers a superpower that other people don't have. Mm -hmm. um, we've just released our third iteration a month ago. Um, it's the world's largest survey of B2B buyers. It's uh, 3,622 buyers we've spoken mm -hmm. to. We've asked them to talk us through their customer journey over the, over the course of the last year or so. So we've looked at over 6,500 brand experiences in B2B. Um, it's across four sectors and across three markets, and we can look at a whole host of different um, outcomes. But it isn't just a piece of research. Um, we've called it the Superpowers Index this year because it allows us to compare what's going on, what's becoming less important and what's becoming more important. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an indispensable tool as far as I'm concerned because we can tell customers at what stage of the customer journey they may be doing well at or not so well at. We can tell them exactly what they should be doing on that and we can directly link that to an outcome. Mm -hmm. So it's a tool that helps customers in the B2B space do a lot of the work that maybe everybody knows they should be doing, but struggle sometimes to work out how to do it and why to do it. And so for 2023, what were some of the main headlines that came out? So there were some things that I guess are relative truisms. Um, the, the journey is getting longer in, in B2B. Yeah. Um, the, the, the gap between winning and losing brands is getting smaller. But if you kind of go underneath things like that, uh, clearly the journey is getting longer because things are getting more complicated, but also people are definitely more risk averse, which is quite, has quite an impact on 
you know, the uh, buying cycle and when you might see return from your investment. And also the gap between winning brands and losing brands is becoming increasingly narrow because everybody's upping their game. So as a customer, you have to look even harder to retain your, uh, mm -hmm. your buyer because actually what's happening is they're becoming more promiscuous, people are doing more great work, and you've got, frankly got more choice in the category. So you really have to work harder. Um, and I guess that's one of the overriding um, principles of the, the, the work that we do. And to my point, we can unpick that very empirically mm -hmm. and help people understand where they need to work harder and the impact that will have. Yeah. Well, you just mentioned the band cycle is definitely changing, more elongated. And what we are seeing is a growing presence of millennials as key decision makers. What kind of influence do you believe millennials are exerting on the B2B decision making landscape? 75% of B2B buyers now are under the age of 35, mm -hmm. which means they've never not had the red dot on their telephone, they've never not had Amazon to deliver things yesterday to them. So there's a rise of customer expectation and um, digital proliferation. So younger audiences coming into the B2B industry has transformed the sales process from offline events and shaking hands through to digital experiences becoming you know, the way to consider mm. cars, uh, products and services. And if I think about cars, for example, people now go for a joyride in a, in, a, in a dealership because they've already chosen the car that they are buying, and it's happening in the B2B landscape too. So digital kind of um, sales cycles is, is critical. And then the other, I think, is the rise of brand marketing. Mm -hmm. Because if I think about the importance of brand marketing in B2B, it's really because the people who are those younger audiences are going to be your decision makers tomorrow yeah. and therefore they ain't going to buy today but what they are going to do is be more predisposed to your brand so therefore you have to make sure that you're appealing to those people so I think the rise of digital marketing and the rise of brand marketing is being significantly driven by um, younger audiences in our category right now they're getting the 95.5 rule absolutely yeah one of the headlines I picked out which I find really interesting was being a force for good is is good business in B2B. We, we talk about the CMO role all the time and about how it just continually evolves and expands. How, you know, how would you suggest they approach this you know, in their remit and how high should it be placed on their list of priorities? Being a force for good um, yes. is good business uh, was crafted as a line by one of our incredible uh, uh, creative directors, a lady mm -hmm. called Joe Webb. And I, I think it's a really wonderful articulation of what we all need to do. But the problem is we all know we need to do it but it's difficult to do and people don't quite grasp sometimes like how to make that happen. Where to start. So that whole principle is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. What we're able to do this year is say, hey, look, of those 6,500 B2B brand experiences we've looked at, what has changed significantly year over year that drives buying behaviour? Mm -hmm. And we've broken that whole journey down to 30 stages, which I won't go into. That's all right. Um, but five of those, five of the most critical changes year over year are ones that are in service of the, the buyer. Mm -hmm. And they're all about personal values. They're all about reflecting the kind of person I want to be in a decision that I make. Mm -hmm. They're about the impact of, that people are buying products and services on sustainability, on DEI, mm -hmm. on trust, on safety, on personal values. So being a force for, for good is just good business means You've got to put those kind of metrics and those kind of messages at the forefront of your marketing communications and not just on a website somewhere yeah. because we know and we can prove that it drives buying behaviour. Yeah. What we find with the B2B Benchmark report is that people know DE&I is crucial. They really do. They know they have got to take this really serious and, and let, you know, embed it into their business. But there's a big gap between knowing and actually doing so what would you say to those businesses out there who are really not sure where to start? Like, what would be maybe three things they could do to start with to try and bridge that gap? This is another great example, I think, which is everybody's talking about all the right things. Mm. My colleague of mine was saying only last week that this cohort of marketeers, people in your personal life, we're on the right side of history. Mm -hmm. And what she meant by that was everybody is doing everything they can to drive um, more equity in their workspace you know, the DEI kind of capability and yeah. function. And it isn't just because it's a, an important thing to do, which absolutely is, but it also drives diversity of thinking. Mm -hmm. There's a fantastic book by a guy called Matthew Syed called Black Box Thinking, mm -hmm. where you know, he talks about a huge amount of different scenarios where if you don't have a cross-section of people from all walks of life making decisions, you're just in an echo chamber. Yeah. So societally, it's critically important. The generation of personal and professional people that I know and I see are all talking and making an impact. And over time, I have a real hopeful optimism that that's going to make a massive difference to society. Mm -hmm. 
but it's also critical for business decisions because different people have different ways of thinking and everybody should have a voice and it actually is proven to you know, be really meaningful. So it's important for society, it's important for business and I think everyone has an individual responsibility to, um, to do what they can. Yeah, awesome. If you could leave us with one, like one thing B2B brands should seriously consider a plan today for a successful 2023 and into 2024, what would it be? Well, of course, give me a call about the superpowers index. Uh, <laughs> but in all, in all seriousness, I think, um, I think what people need to have the support with, which is what the superpowers index is designed to do, mm-hmm. is to say, these things are what your customers are saying. These things are really important for your business. But I do think there's a gap between that and then demonstrating that this stuff works. Mm-hmm. So our superpowers index demonstrates the things that you need to do on the customer journey that drives buying behavior. And we know that if you do a number of those things that are really important, yep. they drive buying cycle time down, they increase your consideration, they drive cross-sell, they increase your NPS scores. Um, so I guess broadly I'd say you know, really focus on where those messages should be placed in your business. But if you would like some empirical evidence to help you, then obviously get in touch because I yep. think this is something that we're obviously passionate about because we've created it, but we're passionate about because I know that it will drive impact in our industry and wider society, which if you go right back to the first question, we have this responsibility, and I do think that business marketing can make a difference to the planet and the economy and people, and we should all be jumping into that. Amazing. Thank you so much, Rob, for joining us in the LinkedIn Can studio. I have thoroughly enjoyed our discussion, so thank you. I definitely walk away with a deeper understanding of profound transformations taking place within B2B and how brands should consider their response. As marketers, may we continue to create culturally relevant and commercially powerful B2B brand experiences that shape a much brighter future for B2B businesses the world over. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye. 